so this is our first week in uh, quantum mechanics. I, um, I hope <laughs> you are as excited as I am. Uh, quantum mechanics is a, a, it's a tremendously important topic of modern physics and, and special relativity is important too, but there's a, um, I think the way in which special relativity is not as interesting as quantum mechanics is, because a lot of special relativity, it really comes down to mathematics. You have the postulate of special relativity and you can just drive everything else from that. Um, to a theoretical physicist like Einstein, maybe that's appealing, that's great. <laughs> but I guess my background and bias is as an experimental physicist and um, quantum mechanics is the triumph of experimental physics over theoretical expectations. So this is a really exciting, interesting topic for us to cover. And I, for me, you know, I, um, I get to do this uh, not often enough and um, you could almost say coverage of quantum mechanics is what all of physics um, up until that you have learned up until this point was uh, coming down to. So <laughs> with the impossible expectation set, um, what I want to highlight in chapter six are somewhat historical introduction to quantum mechanics. So this is the challenge of quantum mechanics, which is that um, we, we are going to change the rules that we have been following so far. So if you look at the physics that you have been learning so far, it has been very cumulative. We were, there were some groundwork laid down like a postulate of special relativity and we built on top of that. If you think back to physics 4A, we started out with Newton's laws and we built mechanics on top of that. Even when we introduce new concepts like energy and momentum, they are still built on top of that concept that your physics 4A starts out with. And um, even, in, even when you get to thermodynamics and you get to electromagnetism, uh, experiments do come in, like there needs to be a way to establish Coulomb's law, for example, or a way to determine the gravitational constant. But those experiments are more of a way to measure the things that you already knew how it was gonna turn out. When Coulomb did this experiment, uh, measuring the ele static um, electric forces between charged objects, it wasn't, the result didn't really shock anyone, I don't think. And even though in magnetism, the, the description of magnetic force is more complicated than electrostatic force, it still, obeys a certain expectations that were established with the initial discovery of the connection between uh, electric current and magnetic fields. So, so the physics you have uh, seen so far have been very cumulative. You haven't seen anything that uh, broke any rules that, um, that you know, one something that you learned as one thing before that turned out to be um, not quite right. And with the quantum mechanics, we are going to see that. And in fact, this is something rare in chapter, in physics, which is that chapter, a lot of chapter six is basically historical. This is uh, something that you could actually kind of skip, not cover any of this and jump right into mathematics of quantum mechanics. In fact, one of the upper division quantum mechanics textbook does exactly that. Uh, Griffith, Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, he just starts out with a Schrodinger equation and just, just builds everything off of that. You can do that. Um, that's the mathematician's approach to quantum mechanics. But I think it's uh, important for you to see this historical introduction to quantum mechanics, to see um, where physicists discovered that what we took for granted in classical mechanics didn't end up holding. So this is uh, necessarily um, 
necessarily a, a shortened list of things that could be covered in what could be called the history of quantum mechanics. This is uh, what's called sometimes called a pedagogical history. Physicists are not good historians. We are not trying to be thorough. We're just trying to point out things that are important for us in teaching physics. So each of these sections have a purpose in being um, used here. And something being left out here doesn't mean it wasn't historically important. So we start out with the black body radiation, not because the black body radiation is necessarily important. It's not really, I mean, you know, it is a ubiquitous phenomenon. And the discovery of the what's called the ultraviolet catastrophe, which is a way to summarize the disagreement between the Rayleigh Jeans law and the experimentally known black body radiation. All of that is fascinating <laughs> quantum mechanics history. I encourage you that you read it. And what's uh, most important about black body radiation is that this is the place where Planck's constant was introduced by a guy named Max Planck. <laughs> um, so in trying to explain the black body radiation, he introduced the new constant uh, H Planck, that we now call Planck's constant. And this is the single most important constant in all of quantum mechanics. In fact, uh, presence of this in any physical expression should indicate that whatever it is you're looking at involves quantum mechanical phenomena. So, so that's why black body radiation is important because that's where we saw the introduction of a Planck constant. And this is now what we believe to be one of the three fundamental constants of the universe, uh, Planck's constant, speed of light C, and gravitational constant G. These uh, don't have to do it with any particular material. It has to do with the structure of our universe. So, and this is where it was introduced. Uh, read about the history, uh, I think it's fascinating. And the second section on photoelectric effect. Uh, this is actually the, um, or the theoretical explanation of photoelectric effect is what Einstein got his Nobel Prize on. It, I, I hope it surprises you that Einstein didn't receive Nobel Prize for his work on special relativity because it was all too theoretical. Nobel committee didn't feel that they could give it to some unproven theory. This is, by the way, why there are no Nobel prizes yet for any of the string theorists, because string theory remains unproven experimentally. <laughs> um, and so, so this is the uh, explanation of photoelectric effect by Einstein is the work that he received the Nobel prize for. And the, revolutionary idea that he introduced that ended up really explaining this ex really old experiment well. This uh, experiment has been around since the late 1800s. Is the, the supposition that the energy of the light being shined on, it comes, <laughs> sorry, I'm skipping through all this, comes in, um, in discrete units. And, and the disc, the, um, describing energy of the electromagnetic radiation coming as discrete unit almost makes you want to reintroduce the idea of a light particle, photon. And that's what we have. So, so Einstein was able to explain this uh, photoelectric effect, which you should read about up in the section, by introducing this uh, simple idea that energy of um, that energy of a uh, light photon comes in this unit, and in fact, when you look at this expression, it should look familiar with the energy of the Planck's quantum oscillators, the Planck's constant times frequency being associated with energy is something that you will see many times now uh, or many times in this class. And, and, and this is simple idea is revolutionary because it's a almost a reintroduction of a disproven idea. 
we had this discussion before is light wave or particle. And we thought the wave side one light was not a particle. And here it, I hear it is Einstein reintroducing the idea that light is a particle. What's new here is that as we introduce the idea that light behaves as a particle, we are not giving up any of it, its wave properties. Otherwise, this right-hand side, Planck's constant times of frequency wouldn't make a sense. The idea of frequency is something that only makes sense with the waves. So as we introduce the idea of light particle, we are not giving up any of light wave properties. And um, yeah, and this was sufficiently revolutionary. I think there were some letter of recommendation written for Einstein that cited his uh, this proposition as being a negative thing that, you know, that's such a crazy idea that anyone who proposes that can't be right in his mind. <laughs> so anyways, but so we did this simple introduction, the rest kind of works like a simple dynamics, conservation of energy. You know, energy comes in from photon, some of that can go to kinetic energy, potential energy. And like, once you accept the idea that light behaves as a particle, then the rest of the explanation of photoelectric effect seems really simple. And, and it is. What's uh, revolutionary is that light really does behave like, not like a classical wave, but as a particle. So that's what that section is for. And uh, section 6.3, the Compton effect, uh, we could actually do without it, but this is a good place to have it because we've covered special relativity and quantum mechanics, the idea of photon. And the com to correctly analyze something called the Compton effect, it involves both. So this is a good place to introduce it. I'll have you uh, read through it, uh, the experimental descriptions. Again, <laughs> chapter six is kind of heavy on history, which, yeah, hope is as interesting to you as it is to me. Um, and I guess, uh, look, well, I'm watching the time and let me cover the remaining half of the chapter six next to week, which is when we will cover it actually. So, so let me break up this chapter overview in two parts and do uh, the second half, which deals with the matter waves uh, next to week so that I, can do it without feeling rushed through. So, so this week we'll be introducing the photon idea and applying it to one situation. Uh, well, maybe two situations, including the context where the photon idea was introduced. And um, and I do have, again, I do have full lectures and um, it mostly replicates what your textbook covers with a slight different emphasis. Um, so I'll leave that for you. Um, and uh, I, I do want you to take enough time as we are going through this uh, introduction of quantum mechanics. Um, I, I think this quote is attributed to Richard, Richard Feynman who said, um, or somebody said, um, if you think you understood quantum mechanics, then you haven't understood it. And, so it is a bit of a mystery statement. I'm not asking you to accept it as um, being <laughs> true, but I think it is important for every uh, physicist and anyone who does work that's closely related to quantum mechanics, which could include the chemists and other related fields, that at some point in your career, you should feel like the ideas here uh, sit that ideas introduced in modern physics should seem paradoxical. It should cause confusion. And, um, and in working through that is I think where you will develop a good intuition for quantum mechanics and modern physics.